Hello all, Shoestring here. Welcome to my channel. So glad you're here. If you're returning, welcome back. If you're new, I want to tell you a little bit about what we do here. The purpose of this channel is to explore, explain, and demonstrate inexpensive ways to live a more self-reliant life. One of the major things this channel seeks to do is demystify solar power generation, although there'll be some other topics from time to time. In each case, though, I will demonstrate my solutions to these issues in a practical, economical, and hands-on way. If you enjoy and can use this type of content, please like and subscribe. Now, on to today's content. I've been asked by several people watching the channel to do a review on the most recent inverter that I had bought to show how easy it is and inexpensive to have small things like a light in a fan when the power goes out and the grid's down. The inverter I had selected was a NDDI power inverter. So we're going to take it out of the box and we're going to walk through some of the items and some of the things it can do. Okay, it is right there. 200 watt inverter. Very small, very simple. Has the connections on the back for your red and your black wires. It has two fuses that easily come in and out, and it has a fan on the back to keep it cool. And the front has, of course, the off and on switch, two electrical outlets to plug in your devices, and two USBs. It's a uh, well, fairly inexpensive, and it feels fairly inexpensive. But it does seem like it will hold up. Also with it comes two alligator clips, one red, of course, and one black. Now, for people that haven't watched these channels before or haven't discussed anything about solar, this may be their first time, I wanted to explain quickly how this works. Your battery is simply your energy storage. However you charged your battery, either from solar, wind, or just a battery charger plugged into the wall, no matter how you did it, battery store your power. From the battery, which is DC power, you need an inverter to turn the DC power to AC so you can use it on your appliances. Real simple how that works, but we want to make sure everyone understands that. That's the basics. So now we're going to talk about the inverter. You're going to take it. You're going to take the black and the red off, caps off. Then you can connect the black to the black, of course, and the red to the red. So everyone can see how I'm doing that. For people who've been doing this a lot, this seems really simple. But I have a lot of folks watch my channel for the first time and has never seen inverters and don't really know how something like this works. So I'm going to do it nice and slow so everyone can see. Okay, so now black and red. Okay, so now we're going to connect, take these and connect them to the battery. We're going to take the alligator clip that's black and put it on the black an alligator clip that's red and connect it to the red. There, it is now connected. So now we want to make sure it works. We simply take it and turn the button to on. And as you can hopefully you can see, the little yellow light came on and actually also looks kind of green depending on how you look at it. But the light is on, so it now works. And you can hear the little fan blowing just a bit. And I can feel that air coming out. Okay, now what we want to do is make sure that it works. So we're going to start out with something simple. Something like, oh, let's take my cell phone here, right? Small, inexpensive phone. Because this is shoestring. And shoestrings does things on a budget. 
Now, as you see from the inverter, there's two different ways we could do this. We could do USB, or we could do the regular receptacle plug-in. We're going to start out with the USB. Let's see if it works. So we're going to plug it in. There we go. Went in. Now we're going to plug it into the phone. Okay. There we go. The phone is starting to come on. And it's starting to charge up. Just like that. So, the USB on this little inverter works. We just showed it. All right, so we will unplug it now. Yes, I know. We unplugged you. You didn't like it. Okay, unplug this. And since we have it, let's go ahead and attempt to see if the receptacle will work the same way. We plug it in. Plug it in there. Make sure it's in the inverter. Plug the phone back in. Wait a moment. There it is. Hopefully you can see that little blue line at the bottom. Symbol of a, of a battery starting to charge up. So that works. We're going to go ahead and unplug it. Okay. And we're going to disconnect those. Our next test is going to be on this little inexpensive tablet. We're going to do the same thing. We're going to take it and we're going to plug it in once he figures out where the plug-in goes, right? All right. Have that plugged in. Now we're going to do the same thing. Connect it and plug it in the receptacle. And there it is. It came on. Oh, let me turn this around. And hopefully you can see right there on the tablet. Come back on so they can see. Right. All right. So up top, you'll see, hopefully, the little battery symbol has an arrow that shows that it is charging. So this is actually charging, and it shows you down here where it says it's charging. All righty. So. It works very well on that. Next, we're going to try something a little larger. I have a fan set up over here. And we're going to take the fan and connect it to the inverter. The fan has come on. Very nice and very quiet. It's running quite smoothly. Hopefully, you can see the fan twirling. Yes. And that works quite well. So, it's important, by the way, when you do these, you take out the manual and you read it. Manual has important information in it that may be vital to what you're doing. So, I want to make sure that you know to read it and keep it on hand. Now, a few quick safety tips about this inverter want to make sure that you remember to keep it in a ventilated area. Now, you can use it indoors, of course. You just want to make sure there's space around it where it can breathe. And you want to make sure that it doesn't get wet. Please don't get these wet. They stay in a dry area. This inverter also has a low voltage protection function. So if the voltage goes too low in your battery, it will ring an alarm and then it will turn off. It also has high voltage alarm. So if it gets too hot, it will also turn off. Now, it's important with this one, this is why we read the manual. The manual says, please keep the work under 85% of its rated power. So, this is a 200 watt inverter. To keep it running long term, you don't want to go over 170 watts. So it's important to keep the book around, read the manual, and know what's going on. All right, that's about all I'm going to cover at the moment. If you have more questions, please put them in the comments. 
And this video and several others came about because people ask questions. If you want to see something else with this inverter, or maybe a different one you've seen me use, please put it in the comments. Ask. If you like this type of video, please subscribe and like it. And shoestring 